Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on this budget knife I got off of Amazon. Uh, I would say the name, I just don't know how to pronounce it. I'm pretty sure the X is silent, but still I don't want to do the company dirty that way. <laughs> I just, I'm not even going to bother trying. I will be linking this down in the description if this is something that you guys think uh, you might be interested in it is a budget knife on this channel anything that is below a hundred dollars I consider it to be the budget territory all you could ever really need in this day and age uh, there's a lot of value in that price range there um, but this is in a very uh, a really really busy price range the $50 price range so this guy is actually $57 60 cents you can actually apply a little 10 percent coupon which takes off you know a little bit nothing crazy um so it gets it closer to the pricing of something kind of like a uh, send cut and i'm mentioning that because uh send cut as some of you may know is produced by the Wii knife company it is the now budget of a budget brand civivi and um at least in the price range, a lot of scent cuts, button lock ones specifically, are actually a little bit less than this. But in my experience, in the short amount of time that I've had with this knife, um, I will say that after using it, messing around with it, taking it apart, cleaning it, doing basic maintenance, basic knife stuff, cutting cardboard, paper, plastic, things like that, um, I think it's actually built just as well as a lot of Civivis and scent cuts. At least with my unit, there was absolutely no fuss with taking it apart. Um, the a lot of, all the body screws, including this clip screws, they're T6, unfortunately. But I will say that the tooling on all the hardware is actually excellent it's actually really really good and my bits my little weeha bits had no problem taking this thing apart and servicing it so i just wanted to mention that right off the bat um i do think that this is a good knife a good budget knife for the price yeah it's a couple bucks more than of a better known brand which would be senka you know what i'm using as comparison here but, um, you know, this is a smaller company, so it's not as big as, you know, the the Wii Civivi scent cut company. So, um, I already talked about the price. This guy is in 14C28N blade material. Has a bead blast finish, G10 handles, G10 backspacer. It's not a full length backspacer, it's just like this little, like, it's only a third of it, but it's there. So it's a nice little added touch at this price point. There are knives that are even a little bit more in price and they still just have like standoffs. So I think it's a nice little premium touch there. Let's see if I could find specs. I had them here just a second ago. Mm. Okay. Blade length 3.15, so it's pretty close to that perfect blade length, in my opinion, three inch mark, but it is a little bit past that, so just be a little conscious of your local knife laws. Manufactured in China, doesn't exactly say where. And for whatever reason, for blade edge, it says compounded bevel. I assume that's just a fancy way of saying a typical edge for a knife. <laughs> um, it has the weight here at 4.6 ounces, but I do have a little scale. So let's see how accurate that is. 4.3, so it's a little bit lighter than what it's saying it is on Amazon. So I think for the size of the knife, and the weight, I think it's just right. So now I get to put my laptop away. Uh, let me bust out a couple size comparison knives to help you guys visualize what this thing is about. 
here we have Spyderco PM2. So it is just a little bit shorter than it in handle and in blade length, but I believe the usable edge is almost exactly the same. Just different style, of course. Native five. Let's do bench make bug out. Osborne 940. Get this a little bit more centered. So the Osborne is a little bit longer overall, but not by much. The last two here, Demco 8020.5 and Civivi Elementum. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Now, talking about this thing, if you guys saw my unboxing and initial reactions of this knife, um, I had a little bit of an issue with it. There was some uh, very inconsistent action, especially when uh, opening and using these thumb studs, which uh, these thumb studs are terrible. Terrible placement, terrible design. Um, they didn't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, thumb studs like this or this right here. They have those little grooves there for a reason. These are completely flat and practically domed over. So there is uh, no grip to them. Uh, but the issue that I had during the unboxing is that the retention or the pseudo detent by the uh, plunge lock was um, either way too light or way too strong to the point where I wasn't actually able to uh, deploy it. Um, I did end up taking the knife apart, cleaned it, stretched the spring a little bit, and I believe I fixed it. I haven't ran into that issue since that unboxing video, and that was almost almost two weeks ago now so um i have been playing with this thing a lot i do definitely enjoy how it sounds um it does flip very well the thumb studs you can get at them they're just not the most comfortable especially the reverse flick it is right up against that scale so in my opinion not the best placement taking a look at this edge here uh this is still the factory edge i've just been stropping it i just really busy i haven't had a chance to actually put it on my sharpening system but as far as i know for now this will be a keeper in the collection uh going into my little budget knife roll because i actually like this knife enough to hold on to it <laughs> so for now until there's something else that probably you know kicks it out of its spot but um i like the blade shape it's very useful um for what i do for work I typically prefer stuff that is um, a very low drop point or something that's you know kind of like a an actual utility shaped blade so that's like one of my favorite blades to use is this guy here because of the blade shape it's maybe not the most attractive but um, it's definitely all functional so with this guy um, I feel like I get a pretty even amount of looks aesthetic but also usability too blade stock, blade stock thickness on this is nothing really special it's not super thin to where it actually stands out and it's actually impressive or anything uh, it's not super thick it's just kind of you know standard there's a blade seal stamp there and the brand logo there so not a whole lot of billboarding, but um, you know, you could always do without it. I typically prefer a relatively clean looking blade. Um, and this does have a bead blast finish on it. And after using this thing, it actually has had some little scratches on it. So it looks a little, 
A little grimy right now. Let me see if I can wipe this thing off. So, at least you guys can see that I'm actually using my stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I can't really do a whole lot about some of them, but in the right light, there are already a handful of little scuffs here and there, but not a big deal. It's a budget knife. It's meant to be, you know, used and abused. Not a big deal. I'm not going to cry over, you know, messing up this knife. Um, one thing that I noticed that was really weird and completely unnecessary is they, the spring that's in here isn't a typical coil spring that is of the same thickness all the way throughout. It's actually conical. So it looks, think of like a, an ice cream cone and it, it it's like they were trying to reinvent the wheel reinvent the spring it didn't need to happen and i think with the spring coming to such a small surface area i think that puts a lot more tension and there's more room for error possibly and creates a weaker spring now the idea behind it having a large spring as it gets smaller and smaller it would be stronger but then you have to think about the actual uh, gauge of the actual thickness of the spring itself of the material it's made into the coils of course um this it's really flimsy really chintzy it's just uh it's not the best and it's i don't really think that this is a knife that you could modify and take like a <clears throat> a good pen spring and replace it because of the shape and the actual plunge lock has um the milled out area where the shorter i mean the, the smaller end of the spring is in it's actually milled out to accommodate that shape so you can't just modify it and take a regular spring and throw it in there you'll probably run into some issues of you know fitment and tolerances and things like that so, but with that being said, I mean, I think this is a pretty decent knife for what it is. Take a look at this pocket clip. It's nothing special. It's nothing fancy. It's a bent steel pocket clip. Um, it does go in and out of the pocket rather well. Um, it is inset into the handles. Unfortunately, lefties cannot carry this, which I think it's so stupid. I mean, this is a budget knife. How much would it have cost to actually mill out a little square right there? We've seen it on plenty of other budget knives. Um, I understand it may take away from the overall design, but this knife is floating around $50. You know, it, it's not that big of a deal. You know, we're not talking about super premium designs here. This is a, you know, this is a user beater budget knife right here. So I think that to get this into the hands of, you know, a larger population, to include lefties would just be a no-brainer but i guess to the company it doesn't really matter because as we all know by now button locks are extremely easy and maybe more favorable to lefties so um you'll probably if you really want this knife you're probably gonna have to carry it a little bit different um but you know it can still be very easily operated um you know left-handed here so In different grips, it's actually relatively comfortable. The G10 scales are very smooth, and there's a very large chamfer that is the same all the way around. So all the corners are knocked down. Nothing is noticeably sharp. It doesn't feel unfinished or cheap. Like I mentioned earlier, this actually does feel something that was made by uh, Civivi or Senkut. So um, it's just... It's just interesting. This, this thing's just a mixed bag of, it's all over the place. You know, it feels like it's really well made, but the action's kind of meh. There were a couple design flaws on this thing that I think could have very easily have been uh, avoided for sure. Dump studs, they gotta go. Completely different shape, completely different design. These things need to go. Um, you know, maybe if you keep the placement and you just add thumb studs that have a little bit of grip to them so you don't slip off like i'm doing right there so uh, you really really have to push down on them and you know like 
really set your thumb on them. If uh, they had, you know, a little bit of jimping on them, then it would just, they would snag immediately with, you know, less effort and the blade would just fly out. See the lock up there in the back? It's about standard, it's nothing crazy. Um, if anything, it's still pretty darn uh, early for a plunge button lock style knife um, on other models. Now, me personally, I haven't experienced that many button lock knives, but I have handled a handful from Civivi, one from Wii, uh, one from Senkut, another from Kaiser, and maybe one or two other ones floating around that I just can't remember. But um, I will say that that is a pretty darn early lockup. So at least there's room for um, for the spring to stretch out a little bit. But with that being said, if the plunge moves further up and the spring is able to stretch out more, there's going to be less tension and this blade's practically going to fall out of here. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head right now who uh, made a, yeah, it was a YouTube short or a, or a or an actual YouTube video. It was either Stasa 23 Knife Therapy or Neves Knives that was talking about this. And they said that they were actually able to uh, hold a conversation with uh, the company. And they said that they would take care of the spring tension. So it's very reminiscent of, you know, the, the conversations that I was having with uh, QIGMGS, now known as Remet. Um, they produced a beautiful in my opinion a beautiful uh premium uh button lock knife and the everything i kid you not for the price it was an absolute deal the only thing that was bad about that knife was the spring the spring was trash genuine trash um, the company did reach out to me and they sent me a handful of springs to replace it. They basically just sent me the same springs that were already in the knife. So I stretched them, I even stacked them, which created some fitment issues. Um, I trimmed some of them, uh, just a couple different techniques and different ideas there. But at least they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel and make some kind of weird proprietary spring thing um it was just a regular freaking spring um so you know that was a miss on that knife and that's a super easy fix in future runs they can keep everything exactly the same but just uh you know outsource a much thicker gauge spring that would immediately take care of um you know the the what would be the detent on you know knives like this and I think that's exactly what this knife needs. Uh, I don't have any issue really with anything about it. It's just, it's a very standard, very simple design. The biggest miss here is that proprietary spring that needs to go. Um, and you know, to have that thing go, the, uh, the milling pocket that's in the actual plunge itself needs to be machined a little bit different to accommodate a normal spring which again should have been to begin with um and you know possibly you know uh, a extra set of, of thumb studs a different style of thumb studs should be you know made available to you know customers so with that being said that's uh pretty much it i don't think i have a whole lot more to say about this thing it has ginormous pockets for weight relief um, you know, we already talked about the way it feels good uh, for its size in multiple grips back here, up there, in a pinch grip. This thing feels good. I think it looks good. It flips pretty darn good, and there's no, like, uh, like major movement. Of course, with it having such a light spring, it's not going to have the most, you know, retention, but it feels solid when it's in there. There's no, like, you know, minor little movements in there. I like how... There's a little space milled out there. And, you know, with... Oh, this also does have a... Um, what is it called? A... It, it's not a free-spinning pivot, from what I remember. It's T8s, so this is very easy to take apart, put back together. 
everything was well machined. There's no blade play side to side. Um, I did feel at first when I got this thing that there was a little bit of up and down, but since cleaning it and taking it apart and uh, really cranking down on it, there isn't any now, but that is something that I thought was worth mentioning to you guys. So that's, uh, that's really it. A little jumping back here, nothing crazy. So yeah, this guy is gonna be fun to use, throw around, play with. Um, again, the only downsides is just that weird ass proprietary spring and the thumb studs are a little meh. You can still get at them, they're just not the most uh, most effective. So, all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did actually enjoy this video, go ahead, give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't. I got plenty more content coming out and have a wonderful day.